Casey Ferris, you probably know him. He runs a fairly large YouTube channel teaching people the basics of DaVinci Resolve. He also runs a small channel teaching people the basics of pixel art, which he hasn't posted in a while. We miss you, Casey. Please come back. Anyway, today we're going to be going over his end-to-end -end training. I'm going to talk about everything that's in it, what's the time and cost associated with it, and is it right for you? So let's start off with what's in it. The course provides you with all the VFX, all the music, all the footage that you need to complete this project. It is end-to-end, -end. you don't need anything extra. The course is split up into six sections with each of those having multiple steps and multiple videos. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. It covers the media page, the edit page, the fusion page, the color page, the Fairlight page, and the deliver page. The cut page is not used in this course. There are projects for each step of the process, so if you get lost, you just load up the next project and you're back on track. It gets you back on track mostly. I'll talk a little bit more about that in my impressions. All right, so that's all that's in the course is the footage, the music, visual effects, the sound effects. That's all in there. So let's talk about pricing and time. So when I talk about price, I always feel a little bit nitpicky. But let me just say right off the bat that I think this course is reasonably priced. It is priced around $300 USD. I think that's fair. I would, however, like to see it down to the $150 to $200 range. I just think more people could afford that. If you're using DaVinci Resolve, chances are you're not looking to spend a whole bunch of money. And also being part of the Blender community, there are courses there that are like 30 hours long for like 80 bucks. Like it's insane value. I realize editing courses usually run a little bit higher. It's just the way it is. But those Blender courses, I mean, they just sell like hotcakes. They do really well because they're so cheap. There's so much value there. You almost feel stupid not buying those. And I think that would really help here. If there was a lower price point, I think a lot of people would just pick this up as a no-brainer. Now, the course is 19 hours, but that's just the videos. This doesn't include you stopping the video or rewatching parts of it or working on your own project, which you should totally do. If you want to get the most out of this course, you should make your own version of this short film. So given that, it's probably going to run you about twice as long. I would say 40 to 50 hours, which consequently is why it took so long to do this review. And they don't get any shorter from here. Merry Christmas in advance. All right, so let's go over my impressions and get into specifics. My overall impressions is this is a very good course. If I could sum up this course, it would be to say that it's like watching over Casey's shoulder as he edits the short film. It's very much you're going through every step by step. You're watching the film, you're looking for mistakes, you're correcting those mistakes. It is end to end. It's a very good beginner course. It's also a practical training, which is so good. You are going to go through this film and there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be audio mistakes. There's going to be a prop you're going to have to remove. Things that you will run into if you tried to go and do your own short film. And this course teaches you how to deal with those issues or to avoid them altogether. And like I said, it's end to end. He goes over everything. He goes over importing, using metadata, color correction, visual effects, the whole thing. There's lots of extra footage so you can make your own project if you want. There's some sound effects and visual effects that are provided. And as far as I know, there was no disclaimer on them. So you should feel free to use them in your own projects, assuming you want to make a sci-fi shooter of your own. Personality comes through a ton in this course, so it doesn't feel like it drags on too much. This guy's just, he's, he's mean. He always cuts people off. Also, he kills people, but mostly it's interrupting. I've done BMD trainings and they're great. They're free and they're 20 hours and lots of content, uh, but they feel like they drag on a little bit. And by the end of it, you're kind of nodding off. I didn't feel like that with this. The only part I thought drug on a little bit was the color section. Most of the sections, even the visual effects and the sound effects, he goes through and he gives you enough to do your own and goes through his thing. I didn't think those drug on, but with color, he kind of picked a color grade early on and just then there was a couple hours of him just tweaking it and fine tuning it. So if you didn't pick that color grade, you were watching a couple extra hours of him do his while you're thinking, does this really apply to me? So this is not an online course. This is a course where you have to download all the footage. It'll take you several hours to download it, unzip it, and put it in its file structure. There is a button to download all the footage. Unfortunately, it's at the bottom of the page. If you're like me, you went through it one by one and then saw that button at the bottom. Please just move that button to the top. Because of the download size, the videos are split up into chunks, which makes it a little weird. The videos range from 20 seconds to like 30 minutes. And sometimes they just feel like they end mid thought. All right, so we have her falling down. That's good. 
So if you saw my After Effects Essentials review, what I really liked was that course was online. You could just pick up where you left off. You had short videos with good descriptions. So if you needed to use it as a resource, if you forgot something and want to go back and learn it, it was really easy to find. The problem with these videos is that's not here. You download it, they're 30 minutes long. You're not going to remember, oh, two minutes into that 26 minute video, he was talking about this. You're just, you're probably not going to go back to it as a resource, which is unfortunate because there's so much good stuff here. The other problem you might find with this is as very much a beginner course. I have no doubt that someone that picks this up will go through it and have the confidence they need to actually go and do editing. However, if you already know a few things, you're going to be watching the same footage over and over and over again. You're going to go through the footage, you're going to correct it, and some of the videos are literally you just watching the video with Casey, which is fine. He has his personality come through, which is great, but you're watching the same footage over and over again, and you're going to see, you know, details, which you're going to correct in the next video. And then if you do your own version, you're just going to watch your own version, then you're going to watch his version. By the end of it, you could just really be sick of this footage. A few minor issues I encountered while doing this course. Early on, there's a couple videos that have some weird audio issues going on. Not really sure what happened there, but you will run into those. There is a cog. That's called the project settings. Let's click on that. And that will bring up our project set project window. The camera shake node is completely different from when he filmed this. I don't know why Blackmagic changed it, but the interface is completely different. It still works fine. Just know that when you get to that part, it's going to look different and you're not going to be able to follow his steps exactly. This course is split into projects, which is great if you want to catch back up. However, if you've done a Blackmagic training, you know that they do a project and they break up their different steps into timelines within that project. They didn't do that here. Every step is one timeline in a new project, which means you're going to have to open up the project and you're going to have to reattach your footage. It's going to give you the media error, at least it did for me every single time, and you're going to have to relink your footage every single time. The media sorting also didn't work for me. So there's a step where he has you sort clips by scene, shot, and take. The scene worked fine, the shot and take didn't for some reason. I don't know if this was a bug in DaVinci Resolve. It was a little bit all over the place. So my other big issue with this course, besides the format and structure, is the lack of community. There's no way to get feedback and ask questions. There is an email provided in one of the early videos, but that's it. If you remember that email, kudos to you. Uh, if you can find it again, but unlike an online learning platform where you can ask questions or leave comments, there's none of that here, which is a real shame because I think that's almost a necessity in courses like this. I would have liked to have seen at least a little discord where you can ask other students questions or where you can ask Casey himself, you know, leave something for the mods. So if they do another end to end training, I really hope they fix that and they do something like online or shorten the videos and at least have a community. All right. So my TLDR on this is the content is very good, uh, but the format needs some love. I think if you want to learn DaVinci resolve and you're a beginner, this is a great course for you. If you know some stuff, it may not be, it may drag on and given the time requirement, you may want to just skip it and stick to some other videos. If you do end up picking up this course, here are a few tips that will help you. Tip number one, click the download all button. Pretty self-explanatory, but there is one, please use it. Tip number two is save it where it's easy to find. I ran into an issue where I tried to save it inside a folder and the file name was just so long that I got an error every single time. So I had to move it somewhere that was relatively easy. You can always go for the pro place of the desktop. Tip number three is using different timelines for different scenes. Take a timeline for scene one, for scene two, for scene three, etc., and then drag those timelines onto a master timeline. This is my preferred workflow because it saves a ton of headache. All it takes is moving one clip or accidentally deleting something when you're working on the whole project, and then the whole project is just ruined. And then you have to hit Control Z like 37 times to undo what you just did. That's how I usually do it. He didn't do it in this project, so I didn't. Uh, but by the end, I was really kicking myself for not doing it. So tip number four is for the VFX. When you're making the glow, there's this reddish tint to it. Casey tries to fix it by changing to a color dodge, but it really just changes the red to black. It may have been a bug. I didn't see it in version 17.5 for since updating. If you do run into this issue, I suggest using a channel booleans and changing the operator from copy to maximum. This will make that red or black or whatever you have into transparent and it'll fix the issue right away. All right, that wraps up my review for the end-to-end -end training. Let me know in the comments if you're gonna pick this up and we'll see you next time. Bye.